Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a deck profile on a Lyrical Monasterio deck, which I never thought I was going to do, especially it's a waifu deck, which I never thought I was going to build, but here we are. Today I'm going to be doing a deck profile on a Black Wing Alestio deck for Standard, because there's too many White Wing decks, and I understand why, as White Wing plays fully aggressive, while Black Wings focuses a little bit on offense while playing defensively, so it is understandable. But I'm going to be doing a Black Wing variant of the deck because Black Wing has a little more interesting plays, especially more interactions with your opponent. Because Black Wing focuses more on negatively impacting your opponent than White Wings, as White Wings basically goes full force with your own rear guards. So I see Black Wings having more interesting plays and interactions. So how does the wing mechanic work? And of course, since I mentioned Black and White Wings, you have multiple ways to build this deck. So one way would be, of course, the White Wings, where you play mostly odd grades to get your White Wing abilities. And then Black Wings, where you play mostly even grades to get your Black Wings abilities. And that, by default, kind of has more consistency because 16 of your cards, aka triggers, are already grade zeros, which are even grades. But also can inherit one problem where your main deck is going to be filled with grade 2, so you will be lacking in boosters. So there is ups and downs in both variants, and also you can play a dual variant, which is going to be a little awkward for some of your cards because half your deck will be functional while the other half isn't during specific turns. So there is that as well. But in many people's cases, they play it with one variant, so at least that they will get most of their abilities off every single turn consistently. So here's my take on the Alestio deck for Black Wings. So how does the Black Wing variant work? So first off, you want to have your even grades in your bind zone and only even grade cards in your bind zone. And yes, there is grade manipulation if you accidentally bind an odd grade, which you will sometimes. But also, Black Wings focuses around using Soul, so Soul Charging will be a little important for this deck. And another thing is Black Wings have a little more interaction to negatively impact your opponent. But on that, let's begin with the deck. So of course we start off with the Ride deck. Of course, we start off with the starter, Mo McCartney, Professionally, Alestio. It's Angel theme, so of course. And then I run Indecessive Sky, Alestio, which when placed, you can bind the top card of your deck. And then you activate one of the abilities depending on what wing you're on. So Odd Grade gives you White Wings, which the skill is. When you would ride something from your ride deck for your next turn, instead of discarding a card, you can Soul Blast instead. So this is good for either player's turns. So understandable why White Wings is a little better. And then for Black Wings is your opponent's grade 1 or less cards cannot attack it. So that's only good if you went first, because if you went first, you will be riding your grade 1 first, and then your opponent will be riding their grade 1 on their turn 2, which will, of course, make it not be able to attack it, but it does deny you a counter blast. But luckily, your Black Wing variant doesn't really focus too much on counter blast, which we go to Shining As Is Celestial, where when you ride it, you would put the buying card to the bottom of your deck, and then you would bind the top card of your deck. White Wings, you can counter blast one once per turn, and it gets one crit. Black Wings, your opponent cannot guard this card with trigger units. Most of the time, that doesn't really come up during your grade 2 turn, because obviously your opponent would usually no guard it and would actually take the damage, as they want more counter blasts. And then to your boss unit, Archangel Twin Wings Alestial. So its skill is, during the beginning of your main phase, put one card from your bind zone to your hand and then bind the top card of your deck. And then White Wings ability, plus 5k one crit. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why people prefer to play White Wings because it plays more aggressively with the crits. But the Black Wing ability is, all your opponent's units gets minus 5k power. So basically, it kind of gives everything 5k extra power attack, and it makes everything you have easier to attack your opponent. So that's basically what it is. Nothing super special, but that minus power will be important because, like I said, the Black Wing variant negatively impacts your opponent. So obviously there will be a little more interaction than the White Wings variant, where you play full aggression, but it's up to you. And now to the main deck. So we don't have a max deck of even grades at the moment, so we will have to play the other three copies of Grade 3 Alestial as you could get away with Persona Riding from this deck, but Persona Riding is always a plus, 
And of course, extra power to your front row can be pretty nasty considering that you're already minusing all your points with regards with minus 5k power. That's pretty good right there. So you could get away without Persona riding if there's more grade 2s or even grade 0s if you want to add boosters in if they do make them. Because right now our only grade zeros is an order card and a trigger unit. But you could get away without Persona riding in this deck. But Persona riding is good regardless. Next, I run the four copies of Urkiel. Urkiel, when your grade three is placed on your Vanguard, you can bind this card and then draw a card. This will interact with the second skill where when it's bound for the rest of the turn and your opponent's turn, you can activate both black and white wings. So just being able to play dual wings for a turn, especially during your opponent's turn where most of your black wing abilities can also activate, that is just really good right there. So really no reason not to run four. At most, it's a little iffy that it's a grade three. And another problem could be that if you use her first skill to bind it, it could add a little awkwardness because that just included two bind cards and you want to keep your bind zone with one card so it's consistently that one wing that you want to play. But you do have great manipulation in this deck, so it's not too bad. And speaking of great manipulation, time to go to the grade 2 lineup with Shadio. So Shadio's skill is an act, counter plus one, put it to soul. Like I said, that soul will be important. Choose one card from your bind zone and increase its grade by one. So if you accidentally bind an odd grade, or you're stuck with odd grades for some reason, this could fix that. And that itself already makes it a four of. But she also has a second skill where black wings, it basically has resist and it cannot be attacked. And that could screw over any of those big bang knuckle like decks. So I, I like that. And the fact that she protects herself while also giving you that ability of grade manipulation as an act, that is really good. And it's a bonus that she's an AK as well, which is more important with the White Wing deck, but there are many cards that interact with AKs for a less deal. So that's an extra bonus. Next, for your basically finisher, MVP, or whatever you like to say for this deck, I run the four copies of Boreal. So Black Wings on place, you can Soul Blast 3, for every two even grade cards on your field. So basically herself, another rear guard, which is very likely, you can shrink down one of your opponent's rear guards by 5k. And if their power reaches zero, they go to the bottom of the deck. So it's just very nice. In some cases, this is good against Zorga, for example, because any card goes to the drop zone, doesn't really matter. But overall, this just minuses your opponent. You will, on average, send one card back. But considering that you do have a grade 2 that can act like a booster for this deck, you'll probably get the four grade 2s on the field. So this is basically your main win con for the deck. Yes, it is Soul Blast 3, but you do have Soul Charging in this deck, and quite a bit actually. So getting this off like three times shouldn't be too hard. Especially when you first call her, you already have three with your ride deck and then you do have some soul charge ability, so not hard. Continue off, Emmanuel. So black wings. At the end of the battle that this card attacks while being boosted, you can choose one of your rear guards and put it back to your hand or one card from your soul and put it to your hand. If it's from soul, you put one card from hand to soul. So it's just either bounces or exchanges card from your soul, which is of course very nice. For one, to reuse some of your on place abilities, and two, you are soul charging a bit in this deck, so so swapping out some of your soul cards isn't bad, especially because you do have that one grade two that you really want to be bouncing back all the time for this deck, as it is the most important grade two that can act as your booster. Which is also the next card, Faniel, which on plays, Black Wings, you Soul Charge 1, and for the rest of the turn, it gets boost. And this is what I mean. No reason not to run 4 of, because you want your consistency of even grades, and it acts as a booster, which is going to be very important. And the fact that it's a 10k booster is also very nice. And, of course, the interaction with this card is also very important, because, yeah, this plus this, and a battle boost, you can return this back to your hand, and then you can call this again next turn. You got that as well. And then finally, not the super most important card, but still pretty good, I run the Chulio. Black Wings, counter boss 1, Soul Charge 1, when it's on place, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and it cannot stand during the next turn. One, counter blast is not even an issue for this deck, because 
This is the only card that uses Counter Blast for this deck, believe it or not. So I'm thinking about buffing this up to 4. But also, making your opponent cannot stand can also be pretty nasty. Now, if it's on an Intercept, now it won't, that won't do much. But if it's on a Grade 3, yeah, your opponent will have to think about replacing it or not. But even just making your opponent cannot do boosting can also be quite nasty. So, of course, you could run four of these, and I'm thinking about it. And then finally, for the grade one lineup, it's only PGs. This is one of your only rare odd grades for the deck, so, of course, it's a PG, so you kind of have to run it. At the same time, you don't, but PGs are the best. And you have great manipulation anyway. And now, finally, for trigger lineup. So, first off... Over trigger, which this over trigger gives you 10k power for all your rear guards for the rest of the game. So yeah, best over trigger at the moment. And then next I run 7 crits, run whatever trigger lineup you want. I run the 4 draws because I do like to draw my cards and get my pieces. Especially when it comes to some of your boosters and all that. Yeah, you do kind of want those draws. And also, it's also an excuse to call it because it's a grade zero, which can also boost. So it's for that excuse as well. You could run front triggers if you want, it's because all your units are kind of guaranteed to hit your opponent's vanguard anyway with that minus 5k. So there is that as well. And you are kind of binding your bind zone every single turn. But I have not really faced a deck out situation, although you are still charging quite a bit. So running draws are fine. And finally, the four heals, because of course you have to run them. So that's it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and tell me below what other cards you would run for this deck or what lineup. I was tempted to play the order card, which is a great zero, because that one lets you make all the cards that you guard during the turn put to soul. So you could get massive soul out of that. It was just one of the things that I was thinking about playing. But it is an order card, and you do have quite a bit of room. You could replace maybe a copy of this and a copy of that, as that's not the most important card. So you do have options. Now, if you play a dual wing variant, uh, you're going to be mixing back and forth when it comes to playing like half your deck each turn. So it's up to you. This is one of the most interesting deck and probably one of the most interesting concepts that Bushiro has came up with when it comes to a certain deck because there's three ways to build it, of course. And go ahead and tell me below which variant you would prefer to play. I gave you a black wing take, as many people keep doing white wings and it's understandable, playing full aggression, but black wings have more interactions while negatively impacting your opponent, and even on your opponent's turn. That is something I'd like to see more of. I'd like to have more interactions on my opponent's turn. Like for example, there are certain cards for the Black Wings that can essentially rest one of your opponent's back row rear guards. There was that one card that I was thinking about playing because resting your opponent's rear guard during your opponent's turn can also be nasty. But of course, this one is better because it's on your turn, it gives you a soul, and you don't have to do it in a specific phase. So there is that. Everything is really up to you. But other than that, there's really not much left. And see you all next time.